Hey guys, me Saran back with another video. So I'm sure you could tell by the title. This is gonna be a rant video. This is gonna be a rant video about fucking Chirac, the movie Chirac. So a lot of people have been asking me, like, oh Saran, what do you think about Chirac? What are your thoughts on Chirac? I've been trying not to talk about it, honestly, because Chirac is like clearly one of those things that I can't talk about because people's fucking stupid ass opinions on it fill me with rage, like Kendrick Lamar. But a lot of people are talking about it and a lot of people are really asking me what are my opinions on it. Um, so I just wanted to make this fucking rant video because the whole concept of this fucking movie pisses me off. It really pisses me off. It really fills me with rage that this movie was even made. I find this movie to be extremely fucking offensive. So for anyone that doesn't know, Chirac is kind of a loose reimagining, retelling of Lysistrata. Lysistrata is a comedy by Aristoph Aristophanes, excuse me, Aristophanes. Um, it's kind of a, it's in the Greek satire tradition um, where you kind of tell a serious story in a, in kind of a comical way. And the story of Lysistrata is the account of how one woman decided she wanted to end the Peloponnesian War, which was like a, a, a ruinous war in Greece. And she decided to get the women together and say, listen, we're not going to have sex with our husbands until the Peloponnesian War is over. And the point of Lysistrata was to kind of point out, yes, the ruinous effects of war, and also to point out the gender dynamics between men and women and sex, you know, and it was written in 411 BCE that now previously this would have been BC before Christ, but now it's BCE. So 411 BCE. So this is a very, very, very old play. Um, and I, and I want to say that in 411 BCE, when this was written, this was groundbreaking stuff, right? This was groundbreaking stuff. This was some of the first stuff you ever saw that actually talked about men and women and sex and power dynamics and war in a certain type of way. Now in 2015, almost 2016, we have different types of ideas. We have different ideas about gender. We have different ideas about men and women. We have different ideas about sex. We have different ideas about power dynamics. And I kind of, I don't even understand why Lysistrata as a way to examine gang violence and gun violence in, in inner cities, how that's even appropriate, you know, like Lysistrata, a retelling of Lysistrata as a broad comedy, maybe not necessarily a satire, but as a broad comedy, you know, women, ha ha, don't have sex with the men, ha ha ha, you know, ha ha, tongue in cheek, fucking frat boy ass fucking humor. They made another movie called A Miami Tale with fucking Trina. That shit came out in like the 99s and the 2000s where Trina got all her girls together in Liberty City, Miami and was like, listen, we not fucking y'all niggas until y'all fucking stop the violence. Like, they already did it. A modern retelling was already done with A Miami Tale. And A Miami Tale was a comedy. It was a broad comedy. It was funny. It wasn't a satire. It wasn't a... It wasn't, and a lot of people, I also want to say that a lot of people don't seem to understand satire because a lot of people are saying like, it's a satire, it's comedy, it's funny. Satire and comedy in this sense don't necessarily mean funny. Like, Chirac is a, it's, it's not a, an, it's not an unserious movie. Like, it's a serious movie. It just chose to use this form of satire as a way to look at a serious topic. And a lot of people feel like that's inappropriate. People have been saying since the movie was first announced that it's inappropriate, and that was like, one of the main excuses that were, oh, it's it's satire, it's comedy, it's comedy. Like, oh, hot gang violence is so hilarious. Like, the whole concept of using Les Estrada I found, I found to be offensive. Um, you know, at a time where we weren't even sure if a serial rapist, Daniel Holdsclaw, would be convicted of his crimes against black women, the narrative of pussy power as a way to control a man's behavior is repugnant. I find it to be extremely offensive. You know, maybe it was comical and satirical in 411 BCE and, and when my, a Miami tale was made, you know, this is, this is maybe funny as tongue-in-cheek comedy, but as a way to discuss what's going on in Chicago, I find it to be a fucking offensive. You know, and especially in 2015 when black women are struggling to bring their rapists to justice, this idea that pussy, power, you know, no peace, no peace isn't no piece of ass. This idea that women hold the power to somehow influence men's, men's actions with their fucking pussies yo fuck that fucking idea like 
it's it's funny if you're making a broad comedy because it's ridiculous but to use that as some type of satire to address a serious topic like gang violence and gun violence like i said i find it to be fucking repugnant like i really can't think of another word repugnant is really the best word that i can think of shy and, and then you also have in addition to to the fucking pussy power misogynor misogynistic bullshit you have the respectability politics Spike Lee is a fucking old man. He's a respectability politicking ass motherfucker. And he and he is all about we gotta do better, we gotta do better, we gotta do better. And I hate this fucking rhetoric so much. I always say rhetoric, but I think it's rhetoric, but I always say rhetoric. So please excuse me because I'm fucking upset and I'll probably say rhetoric more often. Rhetoric. <laughs> and I hate that shit so much because it's just like there's no type of critical examination of why people why people do the things that they do. There's no understanding of cause and effect. People just look at effects and they say people need to stop this. There's no examination of why. It's just oh niggas gotta do better. Okay, but why like why? But like why? Like why are people killing each other? Like why? Why? Let's talk about the why. People don't want to examine the why. People do not want to examine the why. Examining the why makes people so fucking uncomfortable. Critically thinking about these types of issues makes people so, 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 so uncomfortable that they rely on this respectability politics of just like, we gotta do better, and we gotta do better, and we gotta do better. Like, Chirac, the movie, is like a respectability politics cocktail with a little dash, a little dash a misogynoir for fucking flavor, my nigga. Like, I said on Twitter that that shit was, like, misogynistic sprinkles on a shit Sunday of respectability politics. It was, like, Spike Lee took everything bad and, like, put it in this fucking movie. And I'm just, like, so tired of seeing these types of narratives and dialogues circulating around gang violence, around gun violence, around inner city violence, these types of narratives that are not critical, that are not critical, that are not nuanced, that just kind of put all this onus and burden of responsibility on black people without examining how we got here. No one wants to talk about how we got here. People just want to talk about the fact that we're here now. And, and that shit makes me angry. That shit really makes me angry. Like, I would love to see, instead of this bullshit talking about niggas gotta stop killing each other <laughs> even though we don't call fucking mass shoot mass shootings and serial killings we don't say white people gotta stop killing each other we don't say crackers gotta stop fucking killing each other i'm so tired of hearing this fucking shit i would love to see a film about modern gang violence that touches on all the issues and doesn't just reinforce this idea of black pathology and criminality you know like let's talk about the ingredients of what even makes a fucking gang like school closures love school excuse me school closures i'm hot you guys school closures left 12,000 chicago youth displaced in 2013 alone like, the school closures in Chicago are a big, big deal. They're also having an issue with school closures in D.C. as well. They're closing schools and turning them into condos and apartment buildings, or they're privatizing them and they're turning them into charter schools. So you have all these low-income kids that can't afford to go to private school, that can't afford to go to charter school, that are getting pushed out. They either have to be bused to these shitty-ass schools that don't do shit for them because our American school system is fucking broken, or they can't, they can't go to school. They can't go to school. They're displaced. They're displaced. So what do a bunch of kids do when they're displaced? They can't go to school. They don't have shit to do all day. They get into trouble. But no, we're not going to talk about that, right? We're not going to talk about school closures in Chicago. Let's talk about the lack of support for mental illness and fucking trauma and PTSD that black people struggle with daily. Let's talk about dealing with fucking seeing these modern day lynchings of police fucking shooting us daily. Let's talk about the message that sends of how black lives don't matter. Let's talk about how that impacts the psyches of fucking black youth coming up and how they view their fellow fucking black person. Let's talk about that shit, Spike Lee. Let's fucking talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the lack of fucking mental health preparedness. Let's talk about the lack of fucking options where we can even get fucking mental health resources dealing with the type of shit that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's make a fucking movie about that shit. Let's make a movie about that specifically. No? Let's talk about fucking systemic and institutionalized racism and wealth inequality and poverty and fucking no jobs and lack of opportunities that strips us of any quality of life and effectively 
forces people, literally forces them to turn to drugs and gang affiliations just to survive. Let's talk about that. People love to say, oh, niggas are like crabs in a bucket. Niggas are like crabs in a bucket. A crab's natural habitat is not a fucking bucket. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Nobody belongs in a bucket. Nobody wants to talk about how the crabs got in the bucket. Nobody wants to talk about how they're forced into this enclosed ass space where they literally have to fight each other to survive. Nobody wants to fucking talk about that. Nobody wants to make movies about that. People just want to make movies talk about niggas killing each other. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of this shit. I'm so tired of this shit. I'm leaving this shit in 2015. I'm leaving this shit in 2015. Don't, don't even think about leaving a fucking comment about black on black crime on my channel in 2015 because it's getting blocked. You're, it's, you're getting blocked. Sorry, guys. You're getting blocked and it's getting deleted. I don't give a fuck. And I don't give a fuck who you are. If I know you, if we're cool, if we're mutuals, you're gone. You're done. Like, let's talk about... The dozens of organizations and hundreds and thousands of people on the ground doing work, doing the work, doing the work, grassroots work, like my grandmother who lives in Chicago. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the people doing the work to combat gang violence, gun violence, inner city violence, interracial crime amongst black people. Let's talk about it. No? No? None of that fits the narrative of these niggas gotta do better? Boss? No? Oh, so we don't, we, don't, we don't make movies about that. We don't talk about that. We don't run news articles about that. We don't talk about that shit. We don't talk about none of that. Spike Lee is a fucking Samuel L. Jackson and Django ass nigga. He is a house nigga. He is a motherfucking coon. I will never watch another Spike Lee movie again on God, as they fucking say in New York. On God. On God. On God, son. On fucking God. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Like, I'm glad we watched fucking Crooklyn for Beast Bay because I will never watch it again. Fuck him. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm, it makes me so angry. It makes me furious. It makes me furious. It really does. And we were talking about it on Twitter. So I want to read you guys some tweets of, of things that were said about this movie. Um, somebody said... Right? This gives us hor horrible stereotypes, and not that I care what white people think, but more importantly, makes it look like all the hard work that we are doing for our people is overlooked and trying to make us look like wild animals, the wild animals that they want us to be so bad. I know people have problems with Spike Lee for a while because of some super problematic stuff that he says. It's like they're giving all these people, uh, all these black coons a spotlight, but you hear nothing of the people that help. You hear nothing of the of the celebrities that help. Usher, Nas, Snoop. Snoop is affiliated with so many anti-gang organizations, but yet Chirac fucking paints this picture of Nick Cannon as, as a fucking wannabe. This is Zelda right here, guys. Chirac has Nick Cannon playing this wannabe rapper, and, and it's like drawing all these like, conclusions about how like oh celeb the celebrities don't do anything and like the and like the rappers and like the gang violence and it's like yeah but you also you do have like rap that plays a part but you also have rappers that fucking go out there and say don't do what i did where is that where is that oh that's nowhere okay somebody else said the fascist imbeciles are desperate to justify their ignorance and hatred with mythological legend. And I love that because it's true. It's like this idea of the black fucking criminal savage is literally like mythological legend at this point. It's an urban legend at this point. It is like a, it's like, it's like how they said that Mike Brown sw swolled up like the Hulk, like he fucking turned into the motherfucking Hulk. Like this is, it's mythology at this point. It's mythology. And then you have these fucking people like Spike Lee that fucking propagate it and keep it going with their power. It really pisses me off. Somebody else said, I'm just irritated that Spike Lee had the opportunity to really make a serious movie about the root cause of gang violence, but instead chose to make a satirical film depicting black people as the sole masters of our fate, as though there are no other forces involved. And I was, and I wrote this person back like, this is what I'm saying. I wrote that shit in all caps. Like, okay, so let's say there are no, literally no forces involved. It's just you know, guns, we live in a gun culture in America, and, you know, the power of the pussy mysteriously makes the niggas put down the guns. So now what? What happens after that? What happens after the power of the pussy, the pussy power, the no peace, no peace, makes the niggas put down guns? Now what? They still can't find work in Chicago because the economy is fucked up. They still can't go to school in Chicago because the local government is closing them all. So, so what? People don't, people don't just fucking join gangs just for the hell of it, just for the thrill. Oh, I just want to join a gang. It seems like so much, but like maybe white people, because 
because white people are fucking bored with their lives, like Malibu's Most Wanted, but, like, people don't just come out of the womb talking about how they want to join a fucking gang. Like, there are reasons behind it. So you, you use your pussy power to get them to fucking put the guns down, and now what? They still can't go to school. They still can't work. So now you're starving to death. Now you're starving to death. Now you're starving to death because moving that weight was the only way you had any money coming into your house. So now you're fucking starving to death, my nigga. Oh, no, but we're not going to make movies about that. We're not going to make movies about that because then that would have to force us to actually fucking look at and examine the structural racism and inequality in this country. And we can't have that. It's so much easier to just focus on the mythological legend of the pathological black fucking criminal that just wants to kill other fucking black people, isn't it? Isn't it Spike? Hashtag ask Spike. That's what's easy. That's what's easy. Rhetoric, rhetoric, whatever. Shit that you say that's flowery ass prose that sounds nice. Oh, come and extend a hand in love to white people. But it doesn't fucking mean anything. And it's exploited. It's, I'm so got, I'm so mad. Guys. And it's exploitative. It doesn't mean anything and it's exploitative. And it doesn't give any solutions. You're just exploiting problems. You dick. There's just a real short-sightedness, a real short-sightedness around the dialogue that we have about gun and gang violence and what it really represents. And the short-sightedness is really what fucking annoys me and pisses me off. People are so short-sighted and swear they're so profound and swear they're to, oh, no, we need to do better. Come on, black people. We need to do better. Like, people love to say that and it doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. It means literally nothing. People, this movie just gave people coons and white people, because all oh, white critics love it. All oh, white critics are eating it up. That shit has a 4.4 .4 out of 10 on IMDb from viewer ratings. The viewers are hating it. The viewers hate it. But that shit has like an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, the white critics love it. So y'all already know how I feel about the importance of black critics and how white critics love movies that just reinforce these stereotypes and these ideas that they already have about black people. And Spike Lee gave them, he gave it to them on a silver platter. They should loop Chirac on Fox. He gave it to them. He gave it to them. Yes, I'm black. I'm a respected black director and I'm going to make this movie verifying that black pathology that you love so much. Here, take it. Take it. Like, that shit pisses me off. It's like, it's just like my racism is an octopus video. You're focusing on one tenant, one sucker on one tentacle of a beast with eight fucking legs, my nigga, and hundreds if not thousands of suckers. Like, there are so many working parts in play that lead to gang violence and gun violence that one, a fucking satire, Lysistrata, broad comedy, was one, that was not even the correct way to go about it. Two, it was fucking offensive. It's, it's always offensive to put fucking male behavior on fucking female genitalia, bitch ass. That is always fucking offensive. Everything about this movie fucking offends me, guys. Everything about this movie offends me so much. I'm so offended. I'm so offended. Like, I'm so offended. It's not about we gotta do better. That's a fucking cop out. It's meaningless. It's a meaningless statement. I hate rhetoric so much. There's no reflection on what in our broader in a broader sense, what caused, gu causes gun violence, gang violence, inner city violence in the first place? There's no reflection on the fact that black people were put into ghettos via redlining. There's no reflection on the fact that the government flooded our communities with drugs and weapons and then created the war on terror to lock us up, mass incarceration, school to prison pipeline. There's no reflection. There's no reflection. It's just so easy to be a respectable Negro and point the finger at other Negroes like, nigga, you need to do better, boss. I'm, I'm very angry. It really makes me angry. It really makes me angry, guys. It really makes me angry. Um, and I know there are some references in the film to capitalism and capitalism funding, kind of funding gang wars and American gun culture and gun nuts and the ease with which you can get a gun. I know there are some references to that in the movie. I know that before there's people in my comment section talking about, but they talked about gun culture. They talked about gun culture. Da, 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 da. They talked about gun culture. Yes, I know that. I know that. But there is not enough reflection on the larger issues at work in the film. And 
the the meat and potatoes of the speech on capitalism and gun culture and 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 those eri- those serious issues come from a white savior white daddy figure fucking John Cusack playing a minister in the neighborhood that's not even given to the main character Tiana Paris it's given to this white guy to fucking he's gonna stand up in the front of a church at a funeral for a young a, a young black child that unfortunately has been killed by a stray bullet in the movie he, white daddy gonna stand up there and fucking lecture to the niggas about fucking their culture about how their culture is fucked up about how rap in their culture is linked to violence about fucking gun control in their culture fucking white daddy I don't need no white daddy talking to me about that shit Spike, get the fuck, get the fuck on, get the fuck on, get the fuck on. This entire thing is a lesson in respectability politics. And then he really also decided to add the fucking Les Estrada pussy power angle. Like I said before, like misogynistic sprinkles on a shit Sunday. Like the, the respectability politics weren't enough. We needed some misogynoir and some, and some rape culture to just really seal the deal and just bring it on home. We really needed it. You know, I, and and so for anyone that's been wondering how I feel about this movie, I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. Um, I also wanted to read you guys some stuff from Instagram because we were also talking about it on Instagram as well. Uh. One, to imply that the responsibility of changing men's behavior lies with women's vaginas is disgusting and in poor taste. And two, there is no nuance to a conversation implying that black pathology is somehow responsible for intraracial crime amongst black people and we got to do better. Spike is a respectability politics old fool and this film is disgusting. Why are black people forced to hear this narrative about how pathologically criminal and violent we intrinsically are? And why set this movie in Chicago and not in his beloved NYC, which has its fair share of gun and gang violence amongst black youths? This movie is gross sensationalism about a movie that is not his, which I really want to bring that up because Spike Lee loves New York. He always sets his movies in New York. The fact that he chose to set this movie in Chicago is really disgusting sensationalism. He's obviously capitalizing off the fact that Chi- that I was going to say Chirac, that Chicago has this kind of terrible press right now to push his movie. He filmed this movie in six weeks. He got a bankrolled by Amazon and like pushed it out there. So obviously they're trying to capitalize, which is fucking disgusting. Disgusting. I would have much preferred to see a documentary filmed with as much care as When the Levees Broke, which is a documentary series, a great documentary series that Spike Lee did on New Orleans um, on, on Katrina and what happened in the aftermath. I would have much preferred to see a documentary filmed with as much care as when the levees broke on the ingredients that led to the proliferance of gang violence in Chicago in the first place. Redlining, the creation of ghettos, lack of jobs or infrastructure, poor school systems, etc. Not a satire on how niggas kill themselves. Fuck out of here. Like, I also wrote that. Um, everybody wants to talk about the effects and put all this onus on black people and black women specifically, but no one wants to talk about the cause. And a couple of throwaway scenes with the white savior, white daddy character played by John Cusack that briefly touch on them are offensive and insulting. The situation is very serious. The movie is a preachy sermon that focuses on rhetoric people want to hear. We got to do better, Negroes, and not actual solutions or the very hard work that people are really doing to try and combat what is going on. And that's just how I feel about it and that is just how I feel about it and that's just how I feel about it so for anyone wondering how I feel about Chirac now you know fuck Chirac fuck Spike Lee fuck all this shit that's how I feel links in the description box see you guys next time deuces